When a clutch needs to be replaced due to normal wear, component failure, or improper operation, it's important to determine the cause of the failure. Many times, there are other problems that cause the clutch to fail or wear prematurely. Without fixing those problems, your new clutch will likely experience the same failure. Tilton's ceramic friction discs feature a blend of ceramic and metallic components which make the friction material thicker than a metallic clutch, providing for higher heat capacity. The ceramic clutch assembly should be checked anytime symptoms of clutch wear or problems surface. The clutch assembly should be checked for any physical damage during removal of the components. Keep on the lookout for any broken pieces or foreign objects in the area. Before removing any parts from the clutch, note the alignment marks of the clutch cover, floater plates, and pressure plate. Keeping these marks lined up will ensure that the clutch's factory balance is maintained and that the floater plates are not accidentally flipped over. Pull the entire stack out of the clutch and place it flywheel side down on the bench. This will make it easier to keep everything in order for reassembly. Start your inspection with the clutch cover assembly. This consists of the clutch cover, or basket, the diaphragm spring, the retainer plate, and hardware. Look for any obvious signs of damage. Pay close attention to where the legs meet the top of the cover, as this is a highly stressed area. Check the inside of the legs for signs of a failed pilot bearing or bent input shaft, such as grooves cut into the clutch cover legs. Lightly tap the cover on the workbench and listen for any loose thrust buttons, which are an indication that the clutch has been overheated and should not be reused. Next, inspect the diaphragm spring for signs of heat damage. When the clutch is new and uninstalled, the spring will be touching the inside of the clutch cover. As the spring is used and heat cycled, it is normal that it will lose some of its original cone angle and tension. However, the flatter the spring is when uninstalled, the less clamp load there will be when it is drawn down onto the flywheel. If the gap between the spring and cover looks excessive or the spring looks flat, contact Tilton to send the clutch in for rebuilding and spring replacement. Also, check the underside of the spring for evidence of overstroking, such as witness marks from the spring contacting the retainer plate. Overstroking is typically caused by not using a properly adjusted clutch pedal stop, and the spring should be replaced. Lastly, check the spring retaining hardware to make sure it is not loose. Setting the cover aside, inspect the clutch stack. Start by taking the pressure plate off the stack and using a straight edge and feeler gauge, check for warping. Maximum allowable warping is eight thousandths of an inch in any plate. Ceramic clutch pressure plates can be resurfaced to a minimum thickness of 449 thousandths of an inch. Localized heat spots are harmless and can be ignored, but any small bits of friction material that may have welded themselves to the plate must be removed. Be sure to align the balance marks when reinstalling. After installing in the cover, rotate the pressure plate until it contacts the thrust buttons on one side, and use a 6 thousandths feeler gauge between the opposing thrust buttons and the pressure plate. This is the minimum clearance for proper clutch release. Take the top clutch disc, and if you did not do so when the clutch was new, mark the order and orientation of the clutch discs with a permanent marker. Inspect it for worn splines and cracks in the keyhole slots of the core plate. Both of these are an indication of gearbox misalignment. Inspect the friction material. It should be intact and generally smooth. Measure the thickness using a micrometer. Clutch discs start new at 283 thousandths of an inch thick. Discs should be replaced when the total pack wears by 30 thousandths of an inch. Continue with the next floater plate using the same 8 thousandths of an inch maximum for warping and 6 thousandths minimum slot clearance specifications. Floaters should never be resurfaced. Here are a few key points to remember. Never install new discs with warped plates. They will not make contact evenly across their friction faces, which will cause premature wear and possible release issues. If the plates were warped beyond specification, this is the time to install new discs as well. Discs will wear to match the shape of the warped plates, and putting new plates against old discs will also cause premature wear and possible release problems. Always inspect the release bearing and pilot bearing before reinstalling the clutch. Fresh mounting hardware is cheap insurance against a used fastener failing and damaging the clutch. For more information about Tilton Engineering's complete line of high-performance driveline components, visit TiltonRacing.com.